Hi, I just want to share another example of a pillar post that we create and uh, just to share a few ideas with you that you might be able to use in your own uh, content creation. So this one you can see a stadium washroom guide. So it's very specifically um, for a highly targeted audience, but it's a very high value audience. So if someone was to click on an ad, perhaps in LinkedIn, or if they were to find this through a backlink or to find this through, you know, some other advertising, even on Facebook or in um, AdWords, then you know that it's a facilities manager with a very specific need for a washroom, but it's for sporting facilities. So in actual fact, it's a very, very high value customer. It could be worth you know, thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 a year to this business that um, publishes it. And it's great for creating remarketing lists and custom audiences as well, so that even if the person who does visit it doesn't or immediately um, make an inquiry, then at least you've got um, them cookied and you can follow them around with ads. But I'll just go through what we do with this. So obviously stadium washroom guide, there's a couple of keywords in there. Then we put in um, the, the types of keywords that maybe those people would generally be searching for. And that's just put in as a subheading or a, you know, um, like a tagline as opposed. And so those are actually the keywords as well that come out of Hrefs. And so I'll just take you through. So we always start off with a little bit of um, um, a little bit of introductory content, and then we might have a couple of related questions from the SERPs, uh, and then we go into a fair bit of detail. And we always try to focus um, more on providing the solution for the reader rather than reiterating our problems. So we often find with other content creators that they'll often. Um, write a lot about the problem and then the last sentence in the paragraph might be the solution whereas we try to flip that on its head so that we provide more solutions than problems we typically will divide these pillar posts because they're so long you can see my scroll bar over here because they're so long we divide them up into sections uh, it gives us an opportunity to get a lot of subheads in with lots of good keywords uh, gives us an opportunity to add a very media rich um, pillar post which means that the dwell time increases engagements better bounce rates lower so we start off here with some really lovely um, testimonials from customers to set a bit of a tone and great images that we use and then we go into more detail. So, and you can see here that we very deliberately create custom icons and you can see the different color tones here. And that's again, just to break up the visual um, aspects to give the eye something to follow through. But these icons we find are very useful. Again, we will watch this in a tool like Hotjar. We'll run heat maps over this type of content and learn where people are trying to click. So if we found that people were trying to click on this icon a great deal, then we might uh, link that through to another blog article, um, other supporting content great image so we try to source uh, images to use as basically as an image gallery um, and you know obviously they've got to be um, perfectly aligned with the content they're not just a, a random stock photo of someone I don't know shaking hands so then we go into detail with we very deliberately use tables so we will use HTML CSS based tables as simple as we possibly can that's to allow uh, Google to pick up that data and index that data um, again, we use uh, authority citations, very particular to this audience. So this is um, for a New Zealand client. They only want sporting facilities, you know, which there are thousands in New Zealand. So um, we very particularly put in authority citations to those sources. We don't link to a USA based um, source of information. We um, do a local source. So you can see New Zealand, New Zealand throughout more uh, gallery images to give people a bit of a setting that they're in the right spot. Um, going out to um, more authority citations. This one actually goes out to the client's product. So not only to authority citations externally, but also to within the client's website. Okay, I'll just sort of go down. Um, pulling in these kinds of graphics, um, we've understood now that Google can uh, actually read images now. I did a little thing a while ago where I was like literally writing on a whiteboard, scribbling on a whiteboard some plans, and then I turned the, I took a photo of it and um, it was on its side. And even then, because I accidentally opened it in a, in a Google um, doc, it actually read it. It was able to transcribe um, what I had scrawled vertically. Um, in uh, on a whiteboard. So I know that Google is now able to read um, images like this. So again, it just creates that contextual basis for the article. 
So again, we've got a little uh, custom banner in here that just sort of um, with a bit of the, the client branding because people might click on that. That's another thing they might click on. So not only text links, um, contextually relevant text links, but maybe on banners. We also have a content upgrade here so they can get uh, these posters. We love doing posters and signs because what happens is it makes this transition from the online world to the offline world and that uh, creates brand recognition. So if you can get a reader to download one of your uh, content upgrades, but it's something that's actually utilitarian, it's very useful. You can imagine that these posters are going to be stuck up in kitchens, uh, workplace kitchens, in uh, workplace washrooms, and it may means that that brand recognition still keeps living. Um, again, another little content upgrade here, and then diagrams. So we do We've recognized that not only stock photos, not only content upgrades, not only icons, but diagrams, illustrations really get indexed very well by the search engines. And so again, you can see we've sort of lifted off the page to give it a little bit more oomph, but just to make it look visually appealing so that it looks, you know, which it is high quality content. But diagrams we've found are really useful for both readers and also Google loves them as well. And then you can see here um, where we're now using the client's uh, product. So we're really linking through from this type of pillar post, which is very typical in e-commerce, linking from this pillar post through to the product. Um, these are the citations that were um, the authority sources that were cited earlier. So again, just sort of backing it up with some PDFs. These will probably be PDFs. Yeah, they're all PDFs. Um, so another good type of content to include in a pillar post. And then of course, there's the uh, CTA at the end, which really does allow someone, if they do want to make an inquiry, um, then they can get in touch with the business immediately. Um, but as you can see, sort of no other navigation through there and no other navigation through here. And then there's another uh, copy, uh, sorry, there's another uh, content upgrade in here. So there's plenty of opportunities for engagement for the reader and for them. And the dwell time is insane on these, of course, because they're so visually appealing. Um, and there's some great content in them, lots of things to print out, lots of interaction. Uh, the icons keep it really interesting. So yeah, that's how, um, that's how we create pillar pieces that can connect to a product for the client. Okay, bye.